want to minister from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 9. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. This was Paul seeking to encourage the brethren to press the battle for the good fight of faith. And you won't be able to press the battle unless you know God's appointed you to win the battle and to obtain salvation. So he says that God has not appointed you to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, all of God's appointments are kept, all of them. Even those that have to do with men, every day we have a demonstration of this. It is appointed unto men once to die. And after that, the judgment. I don't, like, I don't like the notion that people have that just kind of, you just kind of degenerate until you die. No, God appoints the day of your death. It is appointed. I like to think of it that way. It's kind of a comfort for the people of God to think of it that way. But the truth of the matter is, God appoints it. And it does, in fact, come to pass. It is astounding to me that God can appoint something and it could be a long time before there's a realization of that appointment. There are some appointments to wrath that are like this in the scripture. I think one of the most preeminent ones that comes to our mind is the appointment of the flood. That was an appointment by God. In Genesis chapter 3, we find this word written that the sons of men married, the sons of God married the daughters of men. It was like a notable time in which there was a decline in the human race. It is at that time that God had declared, my spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh. Yet his days shall be a hundred and twenty. In fact, that was the time it took for Noah to build the ark. Hundred and twenty years pass. God hadn't forgot the appointment. In fact, when Jesus referred to this time, he said, speaking of the day of judgment, that as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark. So God doesn't just appoint down to like a year. He can appoint down to like a day. Until the day. So what is that? That's God's appointment. I thought immediately of what Paul had told those philosophers on Mars Hill, that God has appointed a day in the which he will judge the world in righteousness. And his appointments cannot be delayed and they cannot be averted. There was nobody in the earth that could hinder God from flooding the earth. God's judgments, brethren, to wrath are very severe. They are very dreadful. Like the appointment that was given to Cain when the blood of Abel cried out from the ground, and now thou art cursed from the earth. Hmm? That was an appointment that was kept. He told him that when thou tillest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto thee her strength. Now think about that. God's judgments are always attended by being completely unproductive. God can make you completely unproductive and as you know he wandered in the earth as a fugitive and as a vagabond maybe that's why he had to build his own city he couldn't be received anywhere brother whenever when when those who are appointed to wrath get to hell nobody's going to feel at home there his judgments are dreadful i thought of proverbs 29 1 he that being often reproved and hardeneth his neck, shall suddenly be destroyed, and that without remedy. So not only can you stop the judgment from coming, but now you cannot recover from it. There's a big difference, brethren, between chastisement and wrath, like the one we're talking about in our text. See, brethren, I'm telling you these things to encourage you, not only to what you haven't been appointed to, but also to what you have been appointed to. See, God is able to appoint to wrath, and men don't recover from it. Think of acts like the one expended on Sodom and Gomorrah when fire and brimstone rained down on them. 
haven't recovered from that, have they? The Dead Sea, brethren, is a testimony to that fact. Belshazzar heard, God hath numbered thy kingdom and finished it. That's an appointment. The Medes and the Persians had been compassing that city for two years, but little did Belshazzar know that while he was in the midst of this party, they were making their way under the canals and were already in the city. What was that? That was an appointment. God made an appointment and he kept it. God told Israel ten times, ten times you have provoked me. And so I swear in my wrath that you will not enter into the land. That was an appointment. And that appointment was not averted. It was kept. In our day, there is an appointment, a very dreadful one. The scripture talks about that wicked one whose coming is after Satan with signs and wonders, with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they received not the love of the truth that they might be saved which means they had the opportunity to do so. See, our God is very gracious. He is. He's provided that opportunity, but yet there are men that don't receive it, so God makes an appointment for them. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned. I don't think people don't know that God works this way. If God gives you an opportunity to be saved and you pass it over, God can secure you to the appointment of damnation. Hmm? Now, let me tell you the reason why I'm saying this. The reason why I'm saying this is this. Just as God is able to appoint unto wrath, and that appointment cannot be averted or hindered, so God can also appoint to salvation, and that appointment can be hindered. Hmm? That's, that's kind of what I'm getting at. I want you to see here, okay? In fact, in the, in, the, in the words of Scripture, we might say it this way, the Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. He can do both effectually. You remember when uh, Balak sought an occasion against Israel, so he came to the prophet Balaam to try and curse the people? You remember what Balaam said? This was quite a word to come from a prophet like this, but he said, God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Doesn't have to do that. See, men make commitments every day that they can't keep. God doesn't make a commitment that he can't keep. It's not like men, brother, and he's not like men. He's not. He has said, and shall he not do it? He has spoken, and shall he not make it good? Behold, I have received commandment to bless, and he hath blessed, and I cannot reverse it. That's quite a word. I'll tell you, if that's true of Israel, how much more true of it is it in the day of salvation when Jesus is the one bringing it to pass? How much more so? My sheep hear my voice, and they follow me, and I give them eternal life, and no man can pluck them out of my hand. That's that's the kind of God I want to think about. That's the God that's appointed you to salvation. Think of this also, that as when there was an appointment for the wicked, and there was a duration of time before the wrath came, and so now there is an appointment for the righteous, and we are presently in that duration of time waiting for the fullness of salvation. Paul isn't preeminently talking, brother, and when he talks about the appointment of salvation, he's not preeminently talking about what you've already received. He is preeminently talking about what you haven't yet received. There is, brethren, a salvation ready to be revealed. The Bible says that we are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation ready to be revealed. And so we are presently waiting. We're kind of like those martyrs, you know, that were under the altar. Hey, they were still waiting for salvation. They had already left the world and gone on, and yet they were still waiting. Brethren, saints that have left this world and gone on, they're still waiting. And so they said, how long? You remember what the Lord did? He gave them garments as a provision. He gave them something from himself to encourage their anticipation while they wait. And then he said, rest. 
That's another word for wait. And so that's what I'm encouraging you to do today. God's given us a provision right now. And now he's asking us to rest and to wait for the fullness of salvation. Huh? Think of the present provision. We call it the first fruits of the Spirit. That's what it is. Think of it as a confirmation and a testimony to you that you've been appointed unto salvation. Think of it that way, okay? I think of a word that the Apostle Paul gave to the Thessalonians. Well, in, in Ephesians, he refers to this as the earnest of our inheritance. That's what it is. It's, an, it's like a down payment. But Paul said to the Thessalonians, he said, We are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren, beloved of the Lord. Because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation. That's our appointment. Through sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth, whereunto he hath called you by our gospel to the obtaining of the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, Paul didn't say that with any doubt. Why? Because the Thessalonians had embraced the gospel and believed the truth. That's why. Huh? So you've got to ask yourself, do you love the truth? Have you believed the truth? Have you embraced the truth of the gospel? Have you done that? You didn't do that on your own. You didn't do that on your own. It is God that gives us the faith to believe. And you, you must let that truth of your belief of the truth and your love of the truth be a confirmation of good from God towards you. God has appointed you unto salvation. Okay? Now think of some of those things that, that have to do with the salvation that is... I like that word, ready to be revealed. It's ready to be revealed. I, I like that consideration. It's ready to be revealed. Think of the things that have not yet happened but will happen. How about the gathering out of all things that offend? That's part of your salvation. As long as there are things around us that offend, there's jeopardy. There's the danger of being turned aside. That's what you were talking about tonight, Brother Jason. Those things can offend. Blessed is he that is not offended in me. Hey, God puts you through trial. Things that offend. Jesus said a day is coming when the things that offend shall be gathered out and they which do iniquity. Jesus is going to do that. Monday morning, I've got to walk in and clock in and I've got to hear things go through my ear that offend me. And some of you get on a computer in the morning and you see things that offend you. And some of you drive down the road and you can't go very far without beholding something that offends you. And some of you are walking in Walmart and you're hearing a conversation that offends you. See, there are things that are all about that offend. Let that be a testimony that there's a salvation ready to be revealed. Amen. Right? Because as long as there are things that offend... The fullness of salvation has been revealed. I'll tell you, when the fullness of salvation comes, you'll look far and wide to find the wicked, and you will not find him there. That's right. Yeah, amen. Yeah. All things that offend will be amen. removed. How about the redemption of our body? Scripture talks about the earnest of our inheritance, that first fruits that we have now, until the redemption of the purchased possession. See, the blood of Christ, he's purchased your body. See, but he's going to come and redeem it. You know, most of our trouble has to do with this body. The difficulty is associated with this body. But in the world to come, there will never be a conflict between spirit and body. Hmm? When your body is redeemed, when you receive